So to end this Docker series, we're going to learn about debugging. Hi, my name is Nelson, a Linode developer advocate. If you've missed the previous videos for this series, you can click somewhere here or here where you can have full access to the playlist where you can learn about Docker. But in this video, we're going to learn how to debug our containers. And also I'm gonna give you a um, quick preview about Kubernetes because you've seen that we have one server and the thing here is that if, for example, the container dies, we ourselves, we have to notice that the container is not running, first of all, and then we have to restart the container, right? So with software engineering and programming, we want to automate things. And this is when Kubernetes comes into play. So Kubernetes is a container orchestrator. And right now is the most popular technology for managing containers and you should know about Kubernetes. Without further ado, let's kick off this video. So in order for us to debug uh, when working with Docker, I'm gonna show you a couple of commands that are really useful. So in here, let's go ahead together and type Docker PS. So Docker PS allows us to see the list of all available running containers. So here, if I basically zoom out a little bit and there we go. So now you can see things much clearer. So here we have a bunch of containers, right? So remember when I discussed about the Docker architecture, I've said that a container contains basically everything to run your application, right? It contains the operating system, the libraries, tools, and the application itself, right? So sometimes you want to basically investigate what is happening within the container itself. So how do you jump inside of the container? So let's take, for example, this container right here. So Mongo Express, so here, and let's together type. So here, let me just put this a little bit bigger. There we go. So here, I'm going to say Docker and then exec. So this is the exec command. And then I'm going to say dash dash and then help. So this command in here allows us to basically, so here, run a command in a running container. So what I want to do here is the following. So here I want to say dash, and then I want to say it for interactive right here, and then allocate a, a TTY. So you'll see what is this in a second, right? So here I'm gonna say uh, IT, and then I want to pass the actual container name right here, and then I'm gonna say bash. So I think inside of this container is using bash as its default shell. Enter, and fair enough. So it's actually using bash, and you see that now I'm inside. So now I can say ls and check this out. So this is the Linux file structure, right? So actually not here, but if I go to root, for example, so here, so cd, and then you can see that we do have here, bin, dev, etc, home, lib, opt, proc, root, temp, user, var, so on and so forth, right? So cd there for a second, ls, and there we go. So you can see that. That's the uh, file structure. Now, if I type CD and then go back to the previous folder, which was, um, I don't know why I landed in here. So node modules and then Mongo Express. That is a bit weird, right? But here, LS, uh, this contains basically uh, the app.js. It contains basically some, uh, let's just have a look inside. So cat and then config. So this is Mongo specific and don't worry too much about this. I just show, I'm just showing you how to basically navigate around inside of the container. So basically this is just Linux, right? So we've just hopped inside of a container, right? So I've just pressed control D to exit. So here, if I type Docker again, so the command is Docker exec and then dash it. Now here I could say, for example, env and then remove the t in there and you can see that 
this now just runs this command right here. So basically, I just executed the nth command and it gave me all the environment variables right here. So remember from the previous video, we actually did set these three uh, environment variables. Oh, actually, I think it was a little bit more than that, but we configured some environment variables here, root pass, um, and then the, uh, oh, actually, it was on the other one, so we have two containers, right? But here you can see that we have all the environment variables, right? So let's just take another, so docker ps, another container, and this could be really any container. So let's take my app, for example, here. And I think in here, so here, let's just say my app and, and right. So I think that was in a container or oh, that was the image. Yeah, that was the image name. So the container name is right here. So you can see that we have Mongo Express, Mongo, and then these random weird names, right? So let's just take some Nginx, for example. So clear the screen and then run again, some Nginx, enter, and there we go. You can see that we have these environment variables inside of that container. So now let's basically say uh, IT in here. And now for Nginx, I think it's using SH. And there we go, I'm inside. So here LS. And there we go, we are inside. So here I can say CD and then ETC, LS, and have a look. We have a bunch of things in here. And then what I want to show you is because we are using Nginx, so here we should have Nginx. So here, this folder. So this is where the um, default configuration is. So NG and X, just like that. And then LS, you can see that we have a bunch of other things but I want to cat nginx, so this file right here, so nginx conf. So I want you to see that this uh, is the configuration, so the default configuration for nginx, and there we go. So basically, now you know how to jump into um, containers, right? So if you want to basically see around and investigate something, this is how you do it. The other command I want to teach you is, if I press Control D in there, so the other command I want to teach you is logs. So docker and then logs. And here, uh, I think we had a container called the Mongo. So Mongo, so Mongo, there we go. And this gives us the logs. So if I say dash F, so this is actually following, right? So this is tailing the logs. And here, let me go back to my web browser, reload this page. This is Mongo Express. There we go. And you can see that uh, we had some extra logs. So this is cool. So here you actually didn't see, but believe me, right? So this, you can see that this process is actually hanging its way. Oh, there we go. It happened, right? So I'm not lying to you. So here, let me just press control C and this is how you view logs. It's very simple. So Docker logs and then the container name right here, or you can pass the ID and whether you want to say dash F or not. And to be honest, these are the two commands that you're going to be using when, you know, investigating things around. Also, you might use, for example, that Docker and then network. So Docker network. So here you can say list networks, for example, and you can see all these networks. And if you want to describe or inspect for example so information of one or more networks you can do it but most of the time you're going to exec into containers and also checking the logs right now the last part of this video is very interesting so here let me just say docker ps for example and in here let's just take for example mongo express or actually let's just take another container. Let's just take this random container right here. So I got the container ID and here you remember to remove a container, docker rm f. So remove and then force and then kill it. So this is now gone, right? So now if I do docker ps, the container is no longer there, 
Let's take the database as well. So we have a MongoDB right here. So uh, we have a Mongo uh, database running actually. So here, if I say Mongo, so here, I'm going to say Mongo. And this is gone, right? So now in here, let's just reload. And you can see that now this is thinking. You can see that it can't connect to the database because the database doesn't exist. The database doesn't exist. Now, this is a problem, right? This is a problem. So Docker is mainly used for you to package up your applications into images and then run containers, right? Now, what we really want is if a container dies, then we want a tool to take care of it and notice that something happened and then it brings up a new container or even better if if let's say now i'm getting lots of requests and now i want to have two containers up and running we can't do it with docker right so we have something called kubernetes so kubernetes is a container orchestration tool right so you've learned about containers docker images now the next puzzle is how you have a tool such as Kubernetes orchestrating the containers, right? So for example, when you say run the Mongo container, right? So Kubernetes will take your request and then figure out where is going to run your container. So you have nodes and the master node, and basically it's a big topic, but the next thing that you should learn is Kubernetes. So luckily for you, I'm going to be teaching you Kubernetes in the next series. So make sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and let me know what you thought about this series on Docker. And I'm looking forward to teaching Kubernetes. This is all for now. I'll catch you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.